So uh, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll keep it to 20 minutes, even though I can't see the clock. Uh, I'm really good at talking fast, but I'm not in a rush myself. So I'll give you a five minutes. Uh, yeah, thank you. And I'm happy to hang out afterwards and answer questions and whatever. But I, 20 minutes, I'm not going to have time to take the Q&A. So uh, that's just how it is. Uh, because there's a lot of talk to talk about when we talk about sustainability. So basically, I'm the sustainability coordinator here at UofL. It's a university-wide position. So I love excuses to get off of Belknap campus and come to our other campuses. Uh, and um, I've always been a big, big fan of uh, the farmer's market and getting more local food on campus in many different ways. I have a sustainable ag background and international sustainable development background, so um, this kind of thing is what I'm really passionate about. But I've worked on all kinds of things at the university, as you can imagine. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what sustainability is, briefly what UL is doing about it, not in too much detail, and then I'll talk about what all of us can do to relocalize our food chain. Um, I always start my talks with this uh, this three ring circus of sustainability <laughs> because it is a mess. Sustainability is not a simple written down definition. We just sort of take this text and go apply it somewhere. It's basically a balancing act, and that means that we all, as individuals, as institutions, uh, as businesses, in any different context, we all have to wrestle with this concept because it's really about balancing not just that environmental responsibility and wanting to be green, uh, but but balancing that with a social responsibility and an economic one as well. It's all about living within our means. And we are well beyond our means right now in so many different ways. Um, and so if we want to create sustainable solutions, we kind of need to do all these things over here, you know, get rid of waste and pollution, obviously, get rid of abuse in our systems. And especially when we look at our, our industrial food system today, there's so much abuse going on behind the scenes that we don't see that when we go to a farmer's market and we actually meet farmers or local food processors uh, or, or cooks and chefs, uh, we can start breaking down those walls that are between us. And you know, you go to your average grocery store, you have no idea where your food came from, uh, you have no idea how it was uh, produced. Even if it says it's organic produce, and I'm a big fan of organic foods, and um, I think the organic standards we have in the United States are, are pretty solid. But even that is just one realm of this sustainability puzzle, right? <laughs> that's, that's why organic is not necessarily sustainable. If I was running a farm, I'd use organic practices, but I'd use other practices too that would make it sustainable. And that would mean that it made sense economically and socially too. I've been to organic farms in California where a lot of our organic produce comes from. And it is a scary scene. It is not the vision of the future we want for sustainability. Um, there is a lot of abuse to people and planet and other species that happens even in an organic farm. So uh, we need to work on all of those things at once and not just focus on one piece of this puzzle, right? Um, we've got to get away from disposability. We've got to rely more on renewability. We've got to recognize limits and build resilient communities. And that's another great thing about farmer's market is it actually does build community. There's been some wonderful research done by sociologists who find out how many conversations do you have when you go food shopping at a grocery store and the average is very, very low. We don't even often see a checkout person anymore. We do it by ourselves. So um, we don't build community the way we shop for food today. But when we come to a market, we're interacting with other people. When we grow food ourselves in a community setting, we're we're interacting with other people, and we're building community, which is vital for sustainability. So um, there's a lot more to be said about what sustainability is, but I'm going to move on. Um, and just to let you know quickly, UofL has a commitment to sustainability, and again, not just the greening, but the whole package. And the way we monitor that is through this STARS framework, which is put out by the Association for the Advancement of Sustainability in Higher Ed, AISHI. Um, we're all members at UofL. Anyone who is a student or uh, fact, uh, employee at UofL is a member of ACHI and can get great resources for understanding what other colleges and universities do to approach sustainability. And everybody does it a little differently. And that's the way it should be because it's very context specific. But we, we made it part of our strategic plan uh, to do sustainability in 2008 when President Ramsey signed a climate commitment pledging that we were going to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions uh, to net zero. And uh, the Sustainability Council, which I work with, has, has developed a plan for doing that by 2010. Um, so that's our climate action plan. It has many, many different pieces, obviously, and I don't have time to share them all today. Uh, but food is obviously a big, important piece of that. Here's the overall vision for the plan, though, is to take some steps uh, as we go towards uh, net neutrality in 2050 of reducing the emissions that UofL is responsible for. Uh, and, and, and there's so many different ways we've got to do that. 
uh, but certainly food is a big piece of that. So we want to relocalize our food shed. A food shed is like a watershed. It's where your food comes from. And most of us, again, especially as an institution <laughs> with contractors and subcontractors, my gosh, it's, it's, even if we really, really wanted to, it's nearly impossible to find out where, where, what our food shed looks like. Uh, but I love this map. Someone's trying to map out the food sheds of the United States, and I just want to point out we're in the cornbread and barbecue <laughs> here in Louisville. Uh, it's obviously not that simple. Uh, and, 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 and food sheds can be at all kinds of different scales, and, and the key for sustainability is to shrink it as much as possible so that you can get to know your farmers and get that local farm fresh food, like this is Oxmoor uh, Farm Food Literacy Project, get that kind of food onto our campus. That's the goal. Uh, in the climate action plan. And so here's some of the steps in that plan uh, for what we want to do. Um, and, and there's many different pieces to it. It's, it's not just about farmers markets and it's not just about getting uh, local food into our dining halls. Uh, there's a lot of different pieces that I'm going to share with you quickly. Uh, and, and I'll do it in the context of um, talking about what each and every one of us can do to, to eat well, to live well, and, and to promote sustainability every time we pick up a fork, which is, I mean, there's nothing more the only, the two, when people ask, what can I do to be more sustainable, the two things I always say is change the way you get around. Transportation is a huge, huge issue. And, and change the way you eat. Uh, and if we do those two things, we'll be well, well, well on the way to sustainability. Now, obviously, there's a huge issues around energy and all, all these other issues in sustainability. But those two things, I think, make the biggest personal difference in our lives. They really affect our health most directly. Uh, they're, they're, they're the biggest impact in terms of building community. <laughs> The biggest impact in terms of our personal finances and home economy. Um, so eating eating more local is just absolutely vital. And so we at U of L do a lot of different things to trying to make local food accessible. Um, and, and but but it's not just um, about the university. I mean, these are individual decisions we make all the time. Um, and and there's some, so there's many ways to do it. Uh, we certainly uh, try and get as much local into our dining halls as possible. Uh, you saw that map where it shows where the food comes from for our contract with Sodexo, which requires a minimum of 15% local, but uh, we've worked with them quite a bit and with uh, Sarah Fritschner uh, from the city to push that. And it's, it's now actually 20% is an underestimate. The, the last figures I saw was more like 24% of the food that dining halls is locally sourced within that 250 mile radius, uh, but that map I showed you really shows that we've been shrinking that down to more like a 100 mile radius. Uh, and, and then we, you know, we have our awesome Creation Farmers Market. We have a community supported agriculture program that does deliveries to campus, um, and, and we also try to get people to grow their own too. Um, so in, in 2010, we had the groundbreaking for the first uh, garden on campus. Uh, it's uh, in partnership with the Cultural Center. Uh, we have a wonderful before and after <laughs> <laughs> pictures. Here's a, here's a more recent after picture. Um, uh, totally underutilized space that, that was not interesting or useful to anyone. Uh, just had to be mowed with fossil fuels. Uh, now we've turned it into a living, uh, thriving community garden space. Uh, it, it's, it's managed by a student RSO group, but it's totally open to anyone, community members, employees, uh, uh, to, to participate in the garden, get your hands dirty, and, and to learn. Uh, there's cooking uh, uh, activities associated with that and a whole series of workshops, which I'll mention later. And just one really neat project to highlight, which really talks about how this issue of food can bring in other issues of sustainability. Uh, when, when the garden expanded a couple of years ago, uh, we got a grant to put in a greenhouse, but it was off the grid and it needed ventilation. And so it was students in our Renewable Energy Club who got together and said, we can fix this problem. And they made solar panels out of scrap from industry uh, for very for one or a hundred dollars each to run those fans in the, in the and they're still running today and it comes to sunset. Um, so there's a workshop series that goes along with this garden. Um, uh, Stephen Bartlett here is talking about uh, food justice issues, but there's you know cooking as I mentioned, beekeeping, all sorts of different issues related to urban agriculture that are open to the whole community, and I think that's a really important piece of it. Uh, and, and this project has seeded new gardens at U of L. Um, I don't think there is a garden on health sciences today. Um, I've seen a little box over here. I don't know what's going on there. But at one time, there was a small demo garden uh, through the feeding therapy yes. clinic. Um, and uh, we do have gardens on all of our campuses. Then if you look over time, this is a picture from our other Shelby campus, um, the Center for Predictive Medicine out there. Uh, staff there got together and put in a garden on some of their land. They call it the, the birthday garden, because instead of cake and ice cream, they share fresh produce from the garden on people's birthdays. And then um, 
the, the newest garden on campus is actually right behind the building I work in, urban, uh, the Urban Studies Institute uh, on, on Bloom Street in the northwest corner of Belknap campus. Uh, and we just took a tiller out to that a couple weeks ago and put in some raised beds. Uh, this is a project led by students in uh, Urban and Public Affairs grad program and some of us staff. And another little neat thing to point out, this is the Office of Health Promotion on the Oregon campus. Uh, they did a wonderful thing where they took uh, the old cigarette butt containers when we went smoke free and, and repurposed them in a beautiful way to create an herb garden uh, out in front of their entrance. And they're actually going to expand that with some more of those containers. And I should let anyone at U of L know uh, that we have tons of these available if anyone wants to grow a few herbs uh, on campus, anywhere on campus. Um, this, this is a great demo project, a great way to make it visible and to everyone. And then I'll just share a few more pictures of things you can do. Um, Water catchment is a huge important part of sustainability and growing food. This is a picture of the rain barrel system at the Garden Commons at the Cultural Center. We disconnected downspouts. Uh, this is a picture from my house where we disconnected our own downspouts. This is not only a good way to capture a resource, but it also helps solve a problem in our community, which is combined sewer system overflows. Anytime we get a significant amount of rain, all that rainwater has to go into the same pipes as our sewage. And so we're sending raw sewage out to the Ohio River, and we can all, as individuals, take steps to counteract that by simply disconnecting our downspouts uh, or changing the way we manage all of our hardscape, too. Um, composting is vital to growing food and relocalizing your food shed. Uh, that's my compost bin at home. We now have some on uh, Bellman campus, too. Uh, I would love to see more compost bins around campus uh, if we have volunteers to manage them. Uh, this is the future food, and, and that's the way to think of it. It's obviously a way to keep stuff out of landfill, too. Uh, but it's future food to create the soil for, for tomorrow. Um, and here's a picture of some community gardening. Uh, that's my wife Amanda and I uh, do a lot of community gardening in town. This is uh, a garden uh, called the East Main Street Garden, just a few blocks away from here, uh, where we've taken a vacant lot and, and dug out all the bricks. <laughs> we call them East Main Street potatoes. Uh, <laughs> and you can see them there. Uh, and we turn them with that compost that we make at home or that uh, Amanda used to make with breaking the grounds turn that into amazing produce. This is a carrot we grew <laughs> on vacant lots in, in Louisville uh, with just with no chemicals, obviously, uh, just compost. Uh, and then this blew us away, a wow. nine pound sweet oh, potato wow. grown on a vacant lot organically here in Louisville. You can do it, uh, we can all do it, we should all be doing it. Even if you don't have land, uh, this is a great example of, and, and so is that herb garden at Campus of Health Promotion. You can grow a lot of great stuff in pots, uh, almost year round now uh, with our mild winters. This is a picture from our deck. Um, and when you do grow things, uh, we encourage you to, to consider growing protein because um, I'm, I've been a vegetarian for a long time and uh, you know what convinced me ultimately <coughs> to do it was I, I realized that if I had to be the one killing all those animals, I wouldn't be eating all that meat. Uh, but there's all kinds of reasons to consider reducing your meat consumption. Even if it's great, wonderful, delicious, local, organic meat, uh, grass fred, all that stuff is really good and really important, but it's still, no matter what, is going to have about ten times the impact on the planet uh, as growing, uh, as, as eating a more plant-based diet. So um, I always encourage people to consider reducing your meat consumption, even if you can't become a full vegan or whatever. You know, meatless Mondays, meatless mornings. Try something uh, to get yourself going. So we grow, we grow our own beans, and we also harvest another waste resource, nuts. These are just the one year's uh, uh, nut fall from the tree in our front yard, black walnut tree in our front yard. Just an amazing, I mean, we don't do anything to this. It's just, it's a gift from nature, right? Uh, so we invested in our own nutcrackers, start processing those and actually uh, getting to consume them too. So uh, that's all I wanted to share with you today, but uh, I will take some questions and at, at this point and encourage you to check out our website too. There's tons of great valuable information uh, about sustainability in general, about what U of L is doing, uh, links to resources and community, you know, anything sustainability related, you're going to find something valuable, I think, on our website. So uh, check it out if you can and feel free to get in touch with me after. Any thoughts or questions? Yeah, yeah. I can spend